Our first speaker is uh, Tushar Swami from Stanford, and he will uh, talk about his work, Humunculus. And with that, I'll leave it to you, Tushar. Hello. Awesome. Uh, cool. So uh, I'm Tushar Swami, and I'll be presenting Homunculus, Auto-Generating Efficient Data Plane ML Pipelines for Data Center Networks. So machine learning is becoming increasingly popular in networking. And more and more networks are beginning to incorporate them into their architecture. And I know this is a machine learning session. Networking here refers to communication networks, just to be clear. So for example, a software-defined network, or SDN, delegates flow rule-based policy making to the control plane and packet forwarding to the data plane. And here, data plane refers to switches and NICs. So on the other hand, an ML-based SDN simply adds the option to create policies by training ML models and then installing those models into the, da into the data plane to run at line rate. So switch architectures like Taurus actually allow this to happen at a per packet granularity. So with all this upcoming research in ML in the data plane, um, how do network operators actually build these data plane ML models? And it turns out that developing these data plane ML models actually requires quite a bit of expertise in diverse areas with little overlap. So that could be networking, machine learning, and hardware. Um, and now network operators need to be familiar with ML algorithms and hyperparameter tuning. They need to be comfortable writing hardware code, and then they need to be able to balance both hardware resources and network constraints. And so this is a challenging endeavor even for the most experienced network operators. Now, with so many challenges to designing data plane ML, how exactly should network operators actually build these data plane ML models? And as a solution today, we're presenting Homunculus. So Homunculus is a compiler framework that can generate data plane ML models with minimal coding effort. And users now need only provide a short snippet of code describing what they want, and Homunculus will return an ML model to run in the data plane. And this abstracts away things like hyperparameter tuning, balancing of resources, and network constraints. So Homunculus itself is built from three main components. The Alchemy front end that lets users write their code, an optimization core that produces ML candidate models, and a backend generator to actually build the candidate models on the data plane platforms. And so we'll start with the first part, the Alchemy front end. So Alchemy is a framework that's built in Python, and it allows users to focus on what they want their models to do rather than how. And now users are responsible for communicating three main elements to the compiler through Alchemy. So they have to provide the data for the model to train on, they need to specify the model objectives, and then they need to specify the constraints of the system itself. So here, we have an example of an anomaly detection application written in Alchemy. And here, we want an anomaly detection ML model to run in an actual switch. And so first, we'll import the relevant homunculus Python libraries. Next, we'll load the training and test data, and here, we're loading the data from CSV files and returning it as a formatted dictionary. And so we only need to add the data loader, an the data loader annotation as seen in line six for the function to be recognized by Alchemy. In step three, we're gonna specify the model, a deep neural network, where we're optimizing for the F1 score and we're gonna provide it the data loading function that we just specified. And in step four, we're gonna declare that we're using the Taurus platform as the switch where we're going to install our data plane models. And so we're gonna constrain the performance to line rate, so that's one gigapacket per second or one inference per nanosecond in this case. And then we're going to constrain the number of resources available to it. And finally, in step five, we're gonna schedule our model onto the platform and then we're gonna generate the binary. And that's all. In less than 35 lines, our alchemy code is done, and homunculus can generate the desired model. So next, we'll start discussing how exactly homunculus actually produces these data plane ML models. So this is done primarily through the second component of homunculus, which is called the optimization core. So the optimization core 
takes the directives that the user has specified through the Alchemy front end and it creates ML models to test in the data plane. So the optimization core is going to create a design space and then run a Bayesian optimization process within that design space to produce new candidate ML models to train. And uh, we're gonna start up by looking at the core process behind the optimization here in Homunculus. So what happened was we needed some way to make progressively better ML models based on past observations. And in addition, because of the complexity of the system, essentially switches running in a network, we need a black box optimization process where we don't have to give information about the system being optimized. In other words, we only have access to inputs and outputs. And so Bayesian optimization fits the bill on both accounts here. So essentially what's gonna happen is that Bayesian optimization will suggest ML configurations to the rest of homunculus and the rest of homunculus will test these configurations and then send that information back to the Bayesian optimization process, which will take those results into account before suggesting further ML, com uh, ML configurations. So now we'll look at the full optimization loop in detail and how exactly it incorporates Bayesian optimization. So we'll start at step one on the left here, where the user has expressed their data plane ML models via alchemy. So hom homunculus first verifies that the user specified algorithms and platforms are supported before starting the actual optimizer. Next, based on the algorithms requested by the user, homunculus is going to create a design space and initialize the Bayesian optimization variables. So for DNN, these variables could include the number of layers or the number of neurons in a layer. Now, we'll use that design space to start the actual Bayesian optimization process. And we do this using a framework called Hypermapper. So Hypermapper will then start recommending ML configurations as batches of hyperparameters. And using those provided ML parameters, we'll build the actual models and then train them with the data provided by the user in Alchemy. Then we'll test those same models with the optimization objective also provided in Alchemy. And then after that, we'll send the model and its constraints to the backend generator. So I'll talk more about the backend generator in the next section, but this piece is essentially responsible for creating hardware code for the ML models. So once the hardware code for the ML models have been generated, they're gonna be tested for performance and resource feasibility. And then finally, we're gonna send the feasibility and optimization results back to Hypermapper and this will inform future choices. So we'll repeat this process over and over as long as needed, and over time, homunculus will produce better and better models. So lastly, we'll look at the backend generator. So I talked about this a little bit in the last piece, um, and as we just discussed there, the backend generator is creating the hardware code for the ML model candidates produced by the optimization core. So, the backend generator uses a collection of code templates for com uh, components of common ML algorithms and packet processing functions. And we're gonna use that to build an ML model that can actually operate in our network. So this model is then mapped onto the data plane platform. And here we're testing for feasibility. So we're looking for things like the compliance of hardware constraints such as the valid mapping where the available resources are not exceeded and we're also looking for violations of performance constraints, such as insufficient throughput. And this information is gonna be fed back to the optimization core for future configuration recommendations. And we're putting a lot of emphasis here on testing for feasibility, and that's because the compliance of feasibility constraints, or lack thereof, is actually really important for the Bayesian optimization process here, because it reduces the search space. So for example, creating an infeasible configuration by using too many resources means that an even larger configuration doesn't need to be tested because it's going to violate those resource constraints in the exact same manner. So lastly, we'll take a look at some evaluations on real world applications built with homunculus. So we test homunculus across three different applications anomaly detection, traffic classification, and botnet detection. And here the models and data sets are all taken from literature. 
And in each case, homunculus gener the homunculus generated application actually outperforms the F1 score of the baseline hand tuned counterpart. And in cases like anomaly detection and traffic classification, it's actually creating larger models than the baseline. And so this is because it's effectively making use of the available hardware in exchange for F1 score. Otherwise, this hardware would simply be unused. And in each of these cases, the results were achieved within about 20 iterations of the optimization loop. So the takeaway here is that homunculus can provide similar or better scoring ML models in a number of applications. And all of this is uh, working towards significantly reducing the effort on the part of the network operator. So in summary, uh, homunculus is built from three different parts, the Alchemy front end, which provides a high level interface for users to express their intent, the optimization core, which uses network and resource constraints to reduce and traverse the, de the design search space, and finally the back end generator, which maps ML models to data plane devices. So the last takeaway here is that with homunculus abstracting away so much of the model building process, the, oper the operator is now primarily responsible for the data of their algorithms rather than focus, needing to focus on designing hand-tuned algorithms. So, um, you know, looking forward, network operators should embrace this role as, of data curator more than algorithm designer. And that's it for me. Um, I uh, left a link here to our GitLab repository if anyone wants to actually try out Homunculus, and I have my contact information here. So uh, I'm happy to take any questions.